Hi from me, Jared Epstein, and welcome to another episode of Simcha. We know the COVID-19 crisis has been a difficult time for all South Africans, but that hasn't stopped us sharing from our home to yours. Over the next few weeks, we'll be giving an insight into some of the South African country Jewish communities. This week, we get a hearty welcome from the Bloemfontein Jewish community, and they tell us what makes being part of the Jewish community there so special. never felt so comfortable, so welcome, so gifted, so privileged. As small as we are in numbers, we are stronger than a shoe of a thousand congregations. The Bloemfontein community at its peak numbered over 1,600 individuals. Um, sometimes the Cheder classes, which were the Jewish Hebrew lessons after school, numbered over 130 children that used to come together every afternoon to study Jewish lessons. Today, unfortunately, the community is sitting approximately around 60 individuals. However, it is functioning with the same dedication by the members that are remaining here, as it did when it was at its peak. And that is what is important with regards to Jewish continuity in the small communities. You know, even with a small community, uh, we, uh, it is challenging uh, because as one uh, Israeli president once said, he doesn't deal with four million Jewish people, he deals with four million presidents. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is uh, what we have in, uh, in Bloemfontein, the Jewish people, it's challenging. And, and that is why we need somebody always to, to neutralize any problems that we have, and that is why we have uh, Rabbi Silbaft with us, who has been uh, a tremendous help, uh, especially in my time as president. Uh, we're always consulting him uh, with regards to problems or things that we need to do or don't do. I have been here 49 years. Um, I've held several positions. I was secretary of the Jewish Board of Deputies, Chair lady for many years of the Union of Jewish Women. I am still on the Hebrew Kadesha and I'm the organizing secretary of United Hebrew for 18 years. A very interesting aspect about this building is that my father-in-law um, was a founder member of a reform um, congregation. He came from a strictly orthodox home, but he found that there were quite a few of our congregants or a co-religionist who was straying, so he felt there was a need to bring them back to our religion by starting the Reform community, and uh, it grew, and they started off in a private home. They used a, a hall downtown, and then eventually they built this place. This beautiful building used to be the Reform Temple of the Bloemfontein Progressive Community. And when the Orthodox community became too small to worship in their large building, they decided to sell it and they were looking for a house of worship. And the reform community was dwindling at the time and they offered to sell this building to the Orthodox community and uh, to make it into the Orthodox building. I cannot laud enough the people that were involved, the late Mr. Ronnie Rosen, Mr. Leslie Saxton, who's a retired attorney here in Bloemfontein, who dealt with that transition, that purchase, etc. Through their fantastic and positive connection, they established a wonderful relationship between the members of the now closed or defunct reform community of Bloemfontein and the Orthodox community. And I encourage that kind of cooperation for the sole purpose of continued Jewish life in the various towns. And that's exactly what's happened in Bloemfontein. To the extent that Mr. Saxton has allowed the funds from the sale of this building to the Orthodox community to be used for the general maintenance of all the Jewish cemeteries and graves in Bloemfontein, not only the reform section. Behind us is the South Park Jewish Cemetery, which is the latest and the most current Jewish cemetery being used in Bloemfontein. You'll see that all the graves have been laid flat 
and secured in concrete. Unfortunately, the ground here is very soft and it moves quite easily. So we're laying them flat, inscription up, um, to secure them because the day will come when there'll be nobody around in uh, Bloemfontein. So at least we know that the grave and everything below it is secure. I think it's a known fact that Bloemfontein is an aging now and a shrinking community. And so there were no more reform members left. Um, I never left the Orthodox shore because my roots were in orthodoxy and uh, I enjoy coming to shore most Friday nights. The shore behind me is the previous Bloemfontein shore, which was the largest of all their synagogues, of all their shores. It was built in the late 1950s. The president at the time was Henry Bradlow, who was a very prominent businessman and a very dedicated communal leader. Today, the actual shul, the synagogue, is the hall of the Seventh-day Adventist Center, and our old hall is used as the church. This community is something that is very, very special. Everybody uh, plays their part, and um, it's just been a, a privilege, and, and it's just been very special to be part of this Bloemfontein Jewish community. I've been very much a part of the community. Very, very small catering committee I'm part of. Part of the Hebra Kadesha. And I was very involved with WITSO many years ago when it was still active. I think I'm absolutely privileged to have grown up in Bloemfontein, um, which I'll always carry in my heart. And all these people around the table, these special people, I have an association with all of them. I grew up with all their children. We have history. There's a tapestry here which is unbelievable, even though they've all gone on into the world. It's, it's just been an incredible journey. No regrets. I traveled for my father 39 years ago for six weeks on the road. And I used to stop in Bloemfontein every fourth week, sixth week. This went on for seven years. And after 39 years, I arrived back. And my vision of 39 years was unbelievable. I was born in Bloemfontein, like most of us. Uh, I have a business, and um, I, I have a, a wonderful um, marriage at the moment uh, with a beautiful young boy. He is today the only Jewish boy left at Orgul. Uh, left in Bloemfontein going to school. I tried to keep him interested in, in, Ju in Judaism, Yiddishkeit, and uh, he most certainly is, and he keeps on nagging me to teach him uh, more Hebrew, which I'm not so good at, but uh, I'm trying my best. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Chad Baruch Shein Vun Machato Leolam Vetamein. When I was in grade three, I, I told my friend Rayon that's the first time ever my friends heard about that I was Jewish. So then Rayon's like, let me go tell ma'am. And then I'm like, no, no, please. But my mom and dad say, don't keep it like a secret. But I kind of do. But now, like, everybody knows that I am Jewish in my class. We had very good relationships with people from different denominations. And in fact, only recently, I gave a talk on um, Hanukkah to one of the groups I belong, and I've been asked now to give a talk on Pesach. And when um, I saw one of my neighbors last week, she asked me to come over, and I said I couldn't because it was Purim. So she said, well, please, will I come over? Uh, and she gave me a date about three or four months later to please come along and explain what the festival is about and about the Hamantaschen that I gave her to eat that she thoroughly enjoyed as well. We are one big family. Nobody, and you get invited and everyone does everything together. There are no foribles and everyone is very kind. And even on the non-Jewish side, you can walk into a shop in Bloom and they know you by name. And you feel special because they know you by name. Jewish continuity in each town is much greater and more important than just the minion and, uh, and the Jewish worship. And as I said before, I laud this community for the initiative and for the lesson that they taught us and for how wonderfully it's working today.
Averbachs and Blumfontein was a Jewish-owned clothing business for over 100 years. We met recently retired Cesar Rabinovitz, who worked there for over 60 years and managed the business for almost 40 years, and found out more about the impact Jewish-owned businesses have had on smaller towns in South Africa. Maya Averbach, he came to Blumfontein about 10 years before in the Bura War. His nephew came out of Latvia, I think he was, and he joined his uncle's business. He, 1942, his uncle died, and he had the first option to buy the business, which he bought. Originally, you had the Oko Bazaars across Averbachs. You had uh, on the corner a big dress shop. There was a miller on the corner. In, in one little corner, you had three uh, jewelry shops, big ones. Most of them were Jewish, and we got on well with them. Averbachs was just went from one street to another street. It was big. It had a basement, then it had a, a, another floor, and on the top, a floor. A big, there's a big shop there. <laughs> it's big. Today, I don't know, it's different. I was the new owner of Averbachs for about three years. And the people don't believe the value of Averbachs come Dier de pressiejare, kom dier oorlogsjare in persoon so sussel eh uh, die besigheid maak staan. I'm uh, 90 years old and uh, I joined the old Alabach in 1948. 29th of September. It was hard in the beginning until we got accepted and uh, clicks the usual thing. Um, no, he made a good living. I was happy with that. I wasn't mad about the hours. He left very early to open up the shop, and he closed up at five. He had a late customer. He would come home at six, half past six sometimes. Um, no, but I was happy. I was happy. The success that he bought, personally, I think, is over every morning the winkel opens and every evening the winkel closes. Die, uh, in onze ons Afrikaanse mensen zeggen altijd die oog van die baas maakt die beste fit. Averbachs, de staf, de business, de bosses, they were honest. Nobody was crooked. And if the farmer had a problem, the customer didn't know who it was, who he was at. Doesn't matter what it was. If it wasn't right, bring it back, fix it up. It is amazing how so ouwe so bezigheid kon hanteer. Dit is vir my ongelooflik. En wat hy vir die mense wat hier werk, hier is mense wat hier werk wat 70 en 75 jaar oud is, wat ons nog steeds se kans gee. En hy het vir hulle loopbaan geskep. Hy het uh, hy het kinders groot gemaak uit hierdie besighede, uit uit ander gesinne uit. Ek werk al 35 jaar vir Averwas, maar saam met meneer Sisser het ek 32 jaar saam gewerk. Ja, hij is een goede mens. Hij hij geeft om voor zijn personeel, hij geeft om voor zijn voor zijn publiek en zijn cliënten. Uh, is eigenlijk uit baie tijd aan zijn cliënten gespandeerd en uit baie uh, tijd voor zijn personeel ook. I think it's amazing and that they're still going. It's amazing. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I mean, a business going on for so long. They definitely did something right, especially Mr. Sissel. So I take my hat off to him because. He's a good businessman and a great man for the people. <laughs> I've met many people in my life, many. Yeah, this morning when I came here, a man came up to me. And he said that I served him for 45 years. I never ever thought of myself as being Jewish when I'm treating in a business. I used to talk to him and we used to speak about religion. My one customer here from Bainsville used to say, Yoiki, I must 
change called the mistake of Christianity. I've, that the Germanies never ever told me to uh, change, but they used to talk to me about it. One gave me a Bible. It's like a part of the family. I suppose one must come, you reach a time that you, you've got to call it a day. You've got to call it a day. Sarah Evian has become a familiar face here on Simcha with the Prayer and Connection series. This week, she talks to us about starting the day right with the morning blessings. One of the most essential things about prayer is to realize that prayer isn't that we are consumers of divine grace, that we are always asking for something that we need or something that we're lacking or that God is a manager of some store that has it all and in a way is withholding it from us if we don't behave. That is not a concept of prayer that we know about in Judaism. So what we learn in the first few passages of the Torah is that God created Adam and Eve and it says there that God took them, Vayikach, he took them. God took them into the garden. And the sages teach us that this taking was not a physical taking. Rather, it was a taking of seducing and inviting with beautiful words. It says God invited us to join the divine in the Garden of Eden. And right at the very beginning, we had this choice of whether we wanted to follow and be in the garden with the divine or not at all. And this choice is very important for us because freedom of choice is our greatest tool that we have. But also it shows us that God actually de desires our desire. And I'm, I'm going to read here. It is beautiful and striking to see how in God's first interaction with humankind, the divine renounces coercion. God is one who seeks to arouse, who inspires choice through the invocation of desire. God desires our desire. And so God invites us to choose to fill the space that the divine creates. By hearing and responding, we enter into relationship with the divine and thereby answer Hashem's call to fashion reality with God. Relationship becomes possible in the space between Hashem's beckoning and our response. In this instant of suspended animation between reflex and response, our choice is made. To speed on without pausing is to lose the chance to fulfill our deepest yearning. Each time we pause and then choose a relationship, we strengthen our connection with the divine. We are still in the nefesh section of the soul levels. We are building up our physical being so that it is strong and grounded. And this section is called the morning blessings. And there are quite a few of them, and they're very, very powerful. Each prayer, in a sense, fills us with what we are praying for and what we are longing for. And so the first one, The first one we ask is for clarity. And I'm going to read the English translation of it. Blessed are you, Hashem, our divine power, royal guard of the universe, who gave us the awareness to distinguish the significance between day and night. That's the first thing we need in our lives is clarity. And the night and the day gives us a real meaning of this clarity that we're needing. The second prayer is about insight. We're asking for insight. And we're asking to open our eyes because our eyes are the ones that allow us to see. And hopefully it is to empower us to see the goodness around us each day. Blessed are you, Hashem, our divine power, royal guard of the universe who opens our eyes. The third one is about liberty. 
that we are not bound by anything in our lives, both emotionally, physically, spiritually. We are really praying that we are expanded in, in everything in our lives. Blessed are you, Hashem, our divine power, royal God of the universe, who liberates those who are bound. The fourth one is about uprightness. It's that we celebrate the fact that we are, we are upright human beings because almost all other creatures walk on four and their head is the same level as their spine. But for us, our head is above that and so our consciousness is raised above our body. Blessed are you, Hashem, our divine power, royal guard of the universe, who makes the bent upright. The fifth one is about adornment. It's really a prayer that, that thanks the divine for the clothing that we have to wear, but it's also about that we are not naked in our awareness, that we have consciousness and that we have sensitivities to others. Blessed are you, Hashem, our divine power, royal guard of the universe, who clothes the naked. The next one is about vitality, that we have um, not only that we are alive and not tired, but that we have a curiosity about our lives, that we walk around and we are enthralled with, with our life and with those around us. Blessed are you, Hashem, our divine power, royal guard of the universe, who gives strength to the weary. And the last one is a prayer for guidance, that we thank Hashem for giving us everything in our lives, even those that seem to be negative. Blessed are you, Hashem, our divine power, royal guard of the universe, who has produced all my needs and challenges, all for my benefit. That brings us to the end of this week's episode of Semcha, a celebration of life. As always, we'd love to hear from you. So please send us a Facebook message at Spirit Sister Productions. From me, Jared Epstein and the Simcha team, remember, to the world you might be one person, but to one person you might be the world.